on Noco for say and welcome back to another railway model store review with today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Electrotren 060 uh, in a fictional British outline livery. Obviously it's not actually a British engine, it's just done in some made up um, black lined livery. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in, take a look at the box. Quite a simple box, obviously you can see it's clear here so you can actually uh, have a look at the engine. Uh, Electrotren logos up the top here. Uh, one on the bottom, one on this side. Uh, this side we've got details including the SKU which is HES 2001. You can see here it's an 030 steam locomotive molly in blackberry black with red and pale blue lining which is obviously just the made up livery. Uh, I mean it could exist if anyone has got any photos or anything uh, do let me know in the comments but as far as I know it's just a completely fictional made up livery. Uh, so let's take it out of the box now. Just a quick reminder while this time lapse is running, uh, you can get 5% off uh, all items in your basket with us at Rowey Model Store if you use code RMS YouTube, which should be at the bottom of the screen now. And that is only for the subscribers to these videos. Like well wedged in there. Um, so you've got your, your diagrams and your cross sections and that sort of thing. Um, and then um, a load more text. Well, um, looks like this is just a load of mechanical information. Um, I that's all in none of that's in English. Oh no, there you go. Safety notes. So that's what that is there. So here we are out of the box now, as you can see it's a very, very small loco, um, here's like a standard pencil, um, so it's quite a short loco, it's probably only like 10 centimetres long. It's also quite short as well, it looks, looks quite stubby, uh, like the, the cab looks quite low down. Um, I don't really have anything to compare this to unfortunately, uh, being more of a diesel collector. Um, but yeah, let's take a look. So starting at the front, uh, we can see there is a decent amount of detail here. Um, there is a lot of rivets uh, around the boiler here, um, as well as the boiler clock, and, uh, as well as the hinges there on the boiler door. On the buff beam, we can see again, there is a fair few rivets here, and then um, a couple more molded parts down there. I doubt this has sprung buffers. No, no it's got, it hasn't got sprung buffers, uh, which you can see they're painted in black. Um, compared to obviously the red buffer beam. There isn't any detail uh, on the running board here, um, but you know, it's, it is a very cheap model. It, it only retails at about 60 quid, 60 to 70 quid, I think, possibly even lower. Um, and again, uh, the price will be down here somewhere. Um, so yeah, we take a look at the side now, you can see it's actually got outside valve gear, uh, which is always uh, way more fun to look at um, from a running point of view. So you can obviously see the pistons, which is here, moving in and out, and then the rotation there, which is very, very cool. Um, so yeah, this is actually functional. Um, it's not plastic, unlike the LMS 0, what was it? The LMS 440 we looked at quite a while back, uh, which had a fake plastic one and didn't actually move. This one, however, does move. Uh, and also we'll see that uh, down on the layout in a bit. You can see on the side here, we've got some more molded detail around the cab. Uh, we have some piping going up to the, this box up the top here. Honestly, not sure what that is. Um, I'm not familiar with steam trains, let alone Spanish steam trains. So if anyone does know what that is, obviously let me know in the comments and I'll pin it. Um, there's more rivets here uh, around the front of the boiler. Uh, there's quite an interesting funnel here. You wouldn't get that on a British train, sort of a reverse concave shape there if that's the right word uh, it, it sort of gets wider as it goes up that's quite cool there's a boiler dome here uh, you can see that there are um, bands going across uh, they're just not painted in any different colors the lining is actually very well printed uh, i wouldn't say it's pale blue that might just be out my eyes but it looks very much like white to me um, but you can see here uh, the tanks are completely um, surrounded in the lining uh, and then there is a um, printed nameplate here. It doesn't come with actual nameplates 
um, but again, for, for the price, I don't think that's something you'd really expect. There's quite a lot of detail on here as well. You can see there's a lot of rivets uh, all around the box and then going down it, so that's also very cool uh, to see there. Uh, there's quite a intricate, I would say, um, whistle here. I'm assuming that's what that is. That's where they normally are. Uh, it looks a hell of a lot more complicated than the whistles I'm used to looking at. And then there's some more molded detail up on the top here. It's quite a lot actually for the price, I would say. Uh, you can see here there's a couple uh, handrails or what looks like handrails here. Uh, and then more lining all around the cab. And uh, there's some more lining around the back of the engine there. So I'm actually surprised to see that there is actually something of a cab interior uh, on this model. Uh, there's a few items that you can see there, a few parts painted out in, in a bronze. And you can see just up the top there, uh, there is a red uh, wheel of some sort. You can see there's a lot of detail in there. Um, there's a lot of rivets. Uh, there's a lot of sort of piping. Um, so it's very cool actually. I mean, there's not much else to it. I will admit there's no driver's seats or anything, but that isn't bad. Uh, again, for the price that this model is. Um, so yeah, if we just take a look at the back of the cab now, uh, there's no glazing or anything. Um, they are just uh, completely open holes. Um, but again, uh, lots of ropes on the back here. Uh, the printing of the lining is, you know, very fine. Um, and again, uh, no strong buffers, but you can see there's still plenty of detail uh, on the buffer beam there. Um, so yeah, overall, um, really, um, for a little model of this size, it's, it's not half bad at all. Um, so yeah, I guess the next step is we're going to take it down onto the layout and do a little bit of running. So now down on the layout, I just want to show you the motion. Uh, very slow runner actually, it's quite good for my dodgy controller. Um, but yeah, so there's the valve, valve gear, uh, moving really nicely. Okay, so now it is running around the layout very smoothly. It's a little bit noisy, um, but no more noisy than other steam engines really. Um, very smooth, it's not got any issues with the points, which I'm sort of surprised with. I was expecting it to stutter a little bit because it's got quite a short wheelbase. But no, it seems to be doing fine. Uh, some overall thoughts on this train so far. It's actually a really nice little model, uh, which I was surprised about. I didn't really have very high expectations, but um, for the price, there's a lot of detail on there. There's a lot of nice rivets, uh, a lot of detail on the buffer beams. It even has detail in the cab, separately painted parts, separately fitted parts. Very nice, smooth runner. Um, the lining's all very nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can't really fault it, uh, to be honest. Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't technically exist in real life, um, but I can't really fault it for that. That's not its fault. Uh, there is another one in uh, National Cardboard Red as well. Um, so I'll link that in the description too. Um, so yeah, I'll leave you guys now with some running. So hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you do want to purchase one of these, uh, then of course the link will be in the description as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now.